Welcome back to the Buki Chilson channel, and you are looking live at George Thomas Seaver, the franchise, Tom Terrific, the greatest player, bar none, that has ever put on a New York Mets uniform. Um, and he is somebody who I have come to appreciate uh, on a level that I never did as a kid. Um, I knew Tom Seaver was great. I knew that he had done great things for the Mets, including winning a world championship. But I don't think I understood what he meant to the city, to the fans, to the team, um, quite like I do now. Um, and so I'm inspired. I've been thinking about a Tom Seaver video. Iconic Al just put together his Tom Seaver video. is number 29 on the 100 uh, iconic players in Al's estimation. Um, and I love that video. I thought it was great. Um, and I also had a good conversation today with another content creator, Sammy Thunder, uh, who was set up in Garfield, New Jersey. Um, and Sammy, I love having discussions with Sammy. He's another great Mets fan um, and a great collector and curator of all kinds of cards. He had the nicest, most beautiful setup, with just a well-curated setup at, at Garfield. And one of the cards that he had sitting out there was this 1971 Tom Seaver. Um, which had a $20 price sticker on it. And he gave me, without uh, any real haggling or <laughs> negotiation, he said, I'll give you the content creator discount. You got, uh, I'll give it to you for 10 bucks. And so who am I to turn down such an amazing offer, Tom Seaver, um, and this beautiful card for $10. Um, and so I did it. And so thank you to Sammy. Um, I hope you had a great rest of the show. But I want to talk to you a little bit more about some other Tom Seaver cardboard, including my favorite piece of Tom Seaver cardboard um, and card and, and why that is and, and take you back for a little story time. And so if you this is your chance to stop because I'm going to go back and tell some Tom Seaver stories. So um, you can either stay with me or not. But the slide in the back just changed and the cards are moving and the stories are starting. And so here we go. This uh, is the original piece of cardboard for Tom Seaver. This is the scouting report. And you can see some pinholes up in the top left. Um, this is Tom Seaver's uh, card, scout card, scout report card uh, for the Los Angeles Dodgers. When they went to go see him, uh, he was in their backyard pitching for the USC Trojans in 1965. And the man who filled out this card is named, can you read that over there? Tom Lasorda, um, the <laughs> all-time great jo uh, Dodger uh, manager, uh, winner of world championships. He was a pitcher for the Brooklyn Dodgers um, and in their organization forever and ever. And he was the man who got tasked to go out and see how Tom Seaver looked uh, in 1965. Um, and this is the card. The big, uh, this boy showed a real good fastball with good life, has real good command of the pointer release. Boy has a slider type of curve, but could improve as he has good arm action and should be able to come up with a good curve. Boy has plenty of desire to pitch and wants to beat you. Boy, was Tom Seaver, Tom was sort of right about Tom Seaver. Um, and the Dodgers, uh, took that to heart and said, yes, let's draft him. So they took him in the 10th round of the 1965 draft, and they could not come to an agreement on price. Tom Seaver wanted $10,000 more than the Dodgers were willing to give him. And so Tom Seaver almost became a Dodger, uh, but for $10,000, um, and he went back into the draft. Could you imagine if Tom Seaver had been a Dodger? I cannot. Um, and the next year, he went back into the draft, and the Atlanta Braves took Tom Seaver in the second round. And this time they did sign him, except the contract was null and void. The commissioner of MLB st stepped in and said, because Tom Seaver was already pitching, the, the, the USC season had not completed, the Braves could not draft an amateur. Um, and so he voided the contract. And Tom Seaver and his father were pissed off and angry and demanded some kind of solution because now USC considered him a professional because he had declared for the draft. The Major League Baseball teams considered him an amateur, so they couldn't sign him. And so there was just chaos for this promising young who would be a Hall of Famer. Um, and so the commissioner of baseball said, okay, here's the remedy. Everybody who wants to match what the Braves gave Tom Seaver 
can put their name in a hat and we'll draw names and whoever I pull out of the hat is wins the rights to Tom Seaver. And so the Atlanta Braves, the Cleveland Indians, the Philadelphia Phillies, and the New York Mets all put their names into a hat. And out came the New York Mets. The Mets won. The commissioner pulled their name out of the hat and Tom Seaver was a Met. Now, could you imagine if Tom Seaver had been a Philly? Could you imagine if he had been an Indian or a Brave? Like, this just like mind bending. But the, the Mets, who had never won anything, they had lost 100 games a year for the first five years of their franchise, if I'm not wrong. Um, suddenly, Tom Seaver has dropped into their laps. And Tom Seaver came and pitched in uh, one year in minor leagues. And in 1967, he made the team. He made the Mets. And here he is in 1967. And the man on the right is Bill Dennehy. He was the other top prospect for the Mets in 1967. Tom Seaver was a world beater. Immediately, instantaneously awesome. Strikeouts, wins, ERA. Just great. On his way, he would win the Rookie of the Year in 1967. And for their part, Topps uh, put him on a baseball card with Bill Dennehy. Um, and this card was in the, I believe, the fifth series in the 1967 Topps release. And so it wasn't released until, I think, September of 1967. So if you were a Tom Seaver fan, a New York Mets fan, who finally had this phen phenom, um, you could not get your hands on a baseball card of Tom Seaver until way late in the year. In fact, when Tom Seaver pitched in the All-Star game um, and got the save in the 15th inning against the American League, you could not have this. This was card did not exist. Um, and so, unbelievably. Anyway, Bill Dennehy would get traded the next year for Gil Hodges, who would help Tom Seaver turn the franchise around finally and, and, and take it to the promised land. Um, but it was the next year that his All-Star uh, rookie trophy card came out. And this is not Tom Seaver's all-star rookie trophy card. <laughs> this is what Tom Seaver wanted them to print. Um, he had some fun goofing around with the Topps photographer and decided he would throw Lefty for the picture. And he got it onto a baseball card. And it got as far as the proof process. There are uncut sheets with this card on it. Um, that some eagle-eyed editor finally picked up and said, wait a minute, Tom Seaver, Rookie of the Year, is not a lefty. He's a, a righty. And so uh, they figured it out, and they finally ended up um, picking a different photo, and it was this one. And here we have it. This is your 1968 Topps Tom Seaver. This is my favorite Tom Seaver card. Um, it's beautiful. It's got the deep, rich blue of the hat against the sky blue behind him, the yellow of the Rookie Cup trophy, um, the weird burlap, <laughs> whatever. Um, I got this card very inexpensively. It's an SBC. I don't know what SBC is, but I know this card is in really good condition, um, and I'll probably have it um, re-slabbed by SGC at some point. But I love this card. I love this card because in March of 1968, this was the first, he got his first card by himself. He finally gets to be uh, recognized <laughs> on his own card. And he basically took over planet Earth as far as the Mets fans were concerned. He was dominant again in 1968. He ended up taking the Mets to the World Series in 1969 and winning. Um, and of course, as any good uh, baseball card collector knows, they used that image, that same image, in 1969 on his 69 card um, because the players were having a, um, uh, and Tops couldn't agree on a contract, so they ended up reusing a lot of photos. But I like the original 1968 better, and I have a bunch of different variations of it, and I'll go through them for you here. So this is the Milton Bradley Game Edition, which is just a little bit different coloring on the back. I have this uh, this version, which is a, can you see the pinhole? This is on the Holy Grail Wall of Fame. Let me see if I can fix this a little better. I have this Opeachy version, which has 
is also on the Pinhole Holy Grail Wall of Fame. And you can see the light shining through it. <clears throat> and then, here, let me show you this. One of the things I noticed whenever I would visit the Hall of Fame as a kid <clears throat> is Tom Seaver um, has a portrait in the Hall of Fame um, of a... a it's a painting done by Andy Warhol, the famous sort of pop artist from the 1970s. And the Andy Warhol Tom Seaver painting is of Tom Seaver as a Cincinnati Red. Of course, the, Tom Seaver was traded by the Mets in 1977, very <laughs> wrongly. Um, and so that picture is hanging in the uh, Hall of Fame. And so when I saw this card come up for auction one time, I decided I would get it. This to me is a Warhol-esque misprint of the 1968 Topps Tom Seaver card. Um, look at the sort of slipping <laughs> of the printing layers, the yellow next to his face, the uh, yellow outside the lines of the trophy, sort of painting outside the lines. It, it just reminds me of a Warhol painting. And so I love this card. Um, you know, it's totally miscut. Um, and I just love it. I love that this this card uh, sort of redeems the, uh, the Andy Warhol <laughs> era. Um, I also got this card. So this is a different kind of um, printing error. <laughs> Some kid decided to give him, like, I don't know if that's an alien beak or a beard and some kind of mustache and the eyes. This is very Spockish, I think. Um, but there's antenna on it, um, so I'm not sure... This is sort of inspired uh, by uh, Leonard Nimoy's Spock character in Star Trek, but also um, <laughs> it's got D-A-D and an arrow pointing up. I, I just, the whimsy and uh, wit of the kid who made this car, I just freaking love it. And it's on my favorite, frankly, my favorite card of all time. And so there it is. Um, and then there's this card, which is, I think, a much better uh piece of graffiti. This is Tom's autograph on that 1968 Topps card. Um, just, he's got such a beautiful autograph, as Iconic Al noted. Um, awesome penmanship. This is a Sharpie uh, there, but it sort of goes right underneath his chin, uh, right where the beard was on that other card. <laughs> but I love this Tom terrific autograph. Um, and so these are my cards. Now, again, as I said earlier, um, <laughs> I, I didn't appreciate Tom Seaver as a kid. And I didn't appreciate Tom Seaver as a kid for very good reason. Um, because of, as a Mets fan growing up in 1985, um, the first experience I ever had with Tom Seaver was, let's see if I can get the right one here, was this. All right, get out of the way, Tom. Tom Seaver, as a White Sox, pitching his 300th win uh, in Yankee Stadium uh, <laughs> for the White Sox. And so I remember watching this game and thinking, well, I wish he had done that for the Mets. Why isn't he on the Mets? Uh, of course, the Mets totally screwed up. I would find out later. Uh, the Mets left him exposed uh, to the draft in 1984. Um, the White Sox... Uh, decided to take a chance on a 39-year-old pitcher um, who still had some gas left in the tank. Um, and Tom Seaver won his 300th game for the White Sox. Um, the Mets had brought him back after exile in Cincinnati, um, but the White Sox picked him off the Mets roster in 1983. Um, and in 1985, this was the result. The other thing, Cross, that I had to bear with Tom Seaver was in, 19, in the 1980s, he was a Yankees announcer. There he is with Scooter Phil Rizzuto uh, holding their microphones for WPIX. And so anytime I heard Tom Seaver's voice, it was narrating a Yankees game. And I didn't, I wasn't down for that. And so I had this sort of tortured relationship with Tom Seaver. Eventually he would go into the Hall of Fame uh, in 1992, I believe it was, with like almost a unanimous vote. Um, Rightly so, and um, 
of course, the Mets would bring him back into their own broadcast booth um, at some point and do the right thing and bring him back. Um, and eventually they put together, uh, through Steve Cohen, the current ownership, um, they figured out that they should really pay tribute to this man. Unfortunately, the statue went up after he died. <clears throat> um, but the Mets sort of brought him back into the fold uh, in my later years. And when I got back into collecting, um, you know, Dwight Gooden cards are great and Jacob deGrom cards are great, but this is the guy who laid the foundation for all the success that would follow for the New York Mets. Um, there hasn't been a ton of it, but there <laughs> has been some of it. Um, and to think that, um, that it almost didn't happen. He almost was not a Met. He, um, a couple of times, um, and I'm so glad that he was. I love Tom Seaver. I thank God he was a New York Met and not a Dodger and not a Philly, and not a Brave. <laughs> um, and so this is my favorite card. Not this one specifically, but you get the idea. I love my 1968 tops, Tom Seaver. That's it. This video went on for too long. Thank you to everyone who stuck with me. Uh, let's go Mets, and uh, thank you.